Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you joining us as part of our ongoing education, Epicor educational series. I'm Steve Burns with Crawford Software, and today I'm joined by Orrin Colgrove, Crawford Software's Director of Customer Care. Hey, good day, ladies and gentlemen. So if you've been on the last few webinars, we're changing it up a bit. Um, we are going to, going to, over the next three webinars, show, uh, we will highlight some of the standard solutions that Crawford Software develops um, for Epicor customers um, of, of every release uh, for every Epicor ERP installation. The first webinar will focus on the features of adding multi-level approvals to purchase orders. And while everyone's uh, still logging in, I'm going to go ahead and put up a poll. And we're always interested in just finding out what solutions that you're looking for, um, things that uh, would provide value to you. So I'm going to go put this poll up, and it'll be up for maybe 30 seconds or so until we see some folks providing some answers. So please take some time and provide answers for you. Also, um, just some housekeeping. If you have questions, there's a couple ways you, you can answer. There's a question bar at the bottom, uh, of the bottom right, and there's also a chat bar, chat box. So you can um, pose a question for the audience, or you can pose a question specifically for me. So either way. So the poll question, would you be interested in having value-driven multi-level level requisition approval? So we're still collecting some responses. It looks like everybody, just about everybody has responded. I'll go ahead and close that. And then we'll look, we can certainly share the results of that. Uh, or kind of what we thought, right? Yeah, that's exactly what we would think. Though people find the requisition to be a very big element. Yeah, really big, big, big helpful element for them. So I certainly appreciate. Thanks, everybody. Um, before I turn it over to Oren, uh, I'm going to give us just a little background on Crawford Software. What Craw what we do at Crawford Software is we're trusted advisors to enterprise resource planning customers. Right. We strive to improve efficiencies of, of our manufacturing customer base. Now, that can be for new customers. Um, that can be uh, helping them to evaluate and select and implement best-of-breed ERP uh, software like Epicor. Now, we've been a partner. We've been in business for 17 years. We've been a partner of Epicor for 10. And for those types of customers that already have Epicor, the types of services we do for them are business process reviews, uh, business process improvements. We, we we implement lots of new modules for them and then do lots of upgrades. So especially now as Epicor has moved from nine to 10 over the past uh, months, uh, we, we certainly have done a lot of that work with our customers. It's really about maximizing efficiencies within their operations and also solving the growing problem of having to do more with less. We wanna maximize the value of that software that those those customers already own. We we hear we hear it all the time that well I, I didn't know this that Epicor did that or I, I didn't realize that functionality was available to me. And what it means for us is it's our goal. Our goal is to show customers the best way to utilize Epicor, right, to drive efficiencies um, that drive costs down and profitability up. So so how do we do that? Well, we have over 25 years experience in the manufacturing industry and specifically implementing ERP systems in the manufacturing industry. We've been in business for 17 years, but for years prior to that, our founder, Steve Carr, was working as an independent consultant prior to, to, to founding Crawford. And he was working uh, as an independent consultant. He was working with customers that when Steve incorporated, they came to us. And we have customers that are still with us today from those days. So that, to me, defines what a trusted advisor is. But we're no longer uh, a one-person consulting shop. We are a 35-consultant worldwide practice. And on, every, every one of our consultants carries 15-plus years of experience. We have functional um, expertise in, in materials management, production planning, 
uh, and product configuration, as well as the finance side of things um, with APAR and GL, asset management and CRM. Our technical folks uh, do a great job of system design and setup, as well as ongoing mon uh, system monitoring and support. So that's become a really big part of our business. But everybody does that. And I, I think what makes us unique is the amount of cross training that goes on. Many consultants here are both functional and technical experts. And what we've done is, is cross trained those individuals or those team members so that when we approach a customer problem or, or, or a project, we, we have a very holistic view of, of the way to solve that and, and the way the best way to implement that tool. Okay. So it's really about cross training for us. We also offer a dedicated offshore team. Now that offers some customers cost savings, a cost savings alternative. Um, if they're working a large project and, and there are tasks that can be handled offshore, we certainly um, have that alternative for our customers. Um, but again, you're always dealing with a US based project manager. And some customers like the flexibility of offshore. So if they're doing their, their upgrade, they wanna do after hours or they wanna do uh, the weekends, that allows them that flexibility. So one of the unique factors or differentiators about Crawford Software is the fact that we install and run every version of Epicor on our internal servers. So we go back to Vista and Vantage and Epicor 9 and all the way up to 10, versions of 10. What that means is that we can perform your upgrade on our servers. There's lots of value to that, right? Security, but one of the big ones obviously is internal testing and validation on our servers before we ever put anything uh, in a go-live environment within your production environment. So we build standard solutions that help, that help customers, um, all, all Epicor ERP installations maximize their experience with the software. And that may be an overall process improvement, or it may be a specific uh, functionality improvement for Epicor. And that's where we'll start off today. Uh, Orrin will be showing us showing us one of our um, one of our standard solutions, which is a multi-level purchase order approval, and how we built it. And he'll he'll show you in the system what it looks like and, and the best way to utilize it. So in in that case, what I will do is I'll go ahead and turn turn the presentation over to Orrin, and he can run through his uh, multi-level PO approval. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, and good morning. Good afternoon and good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to hear about Crawford Software and uh, one of our many standard solutions that we have, and that's the multi-level PO approvals. This solution has seen a lot of elements that have been wanted and needed by a lot of our customers and that as we go through, and as you'll see, when I go through this, you'll see the things that we're talking about and see some of the benefits that are associated there as we process through. Um, so let's talk about this a little bit and let's talk about our agenda for today. Um, our agenda is going to be very simple uh, process today. What are PO approvals? You know, for those that might not know uh, that it exists, uh, what are they? Why would we use them? And then I want to briefly touch upon the Epicor standard PO approval, and then we'll go into Crawford's software standard PO approvals. And when I finish with that on the PowerPoint presentation, you know, because we all like those PowerPoints so much, I'm going to actually show you the product and show you how we go through that process. So what are the PO approvals? You know, it's, it, that is a preset spending limit on a buyer. Uh, per purchase order total value. Now, when I say a purchase order total value, that is not just on a line level, but that is the overall value of that purchase order. It might include uh, miscellaneous charges and all of those things that are associated there as well. And when that level is hit, that purchase order then goes on a uh, hold status, basically a pending that can't be uh, sent out uh, as a PO yet, uh, and needs to be approved or rejected in order for it to be placed with the supplier, or should be approved before it goes out. And, and why would we want to use that? It really, 
takes and assists your company in keeping an eye on spending from a overall perspective, but all the way down to that buyer's spending within the organization so that you can watch from a budget side if you have someone buying in a commodities area uh, a large amount you can then have some control and watching over that type of a thing that's associated there so that's why you would want to use that type of a PO approval process um, and you want to make sure that you're getting the right value points that you have within there so how does the standard Epicor PO approval process work? Well, you set up a buyer, you set up a limit on their buying limit, then that buyer goes and creates a purchase order. And on that buyer, they have a, a an approver that is required. Then if it's a the order that they place is above that limit, it goes into what Epicor calls a pending status. And then the buyer's approver needs to approve that purchase order. <clears throat> they go into a PO approval. Then they also go and review that, and then they approve or reject that. Um, and I'll show you <clears throat> that as we go through this as well. I'll show you the screens that are associated to this. And then the approved purchase order goes to an approved status. At that time is when you would really want to send that purchase order out to the supplier themselves. So how does that work? You know, in the standard Epicor, we have the buyer maintenance. You have what their buyer's limit is. Uh, right in the center here, there's the buyer's limit itself. And then you have who the approval person is. This is where Epicor has one level of approval, and that's the only thing that exists within the Epicor standard product at this time. So what happens is the buyer goes and places a purchase order. He goes and puts in his line uh, or lines that are associated to this. And when he goes and saves it and goes to try to approve it to print that purchase order, he gets a message that he's exceeded his limit and who then that has to go to. And you then see directly on the purchase order itself, you see the pending status that is there. Now, sorry about that. I skipped through forward with the mouse click uh, by mistake for you. So you see the pending, and now you already know that it needs to go to that next level person. So, that next level person goes to a program that's called the PO approval. This is standard Epicor. The action, they see their, their approvals, the, the POs that they have that are pending their approvals, and they have the action that they can take, they can accept, or they can reject it. And then one of the things that we recommend always for uh, traceability for better understanding of what is going on and who is doing what, we recommend highly this date slash user stamp, which puts on that record, on that purchase order in the record process, the user's ID, the date and the time that that user approved or rejected that. You can also put additional comments in, and that is uh, through standard processes uh, with the standard of course. After the PO was approved, what happens is it goes back to the purchase order entry and it gets marked and goes green. Um, as you saw on the initial screen when we created the purchase order and the user was over their limit, it went yellow. Uh, thinking about the stoplight, um, you're kind of supposed to slow down a little bit when you get a yellow. Um, and, you know, drive through um, up to the next person, not uh, continue to drive forward and then go as fast as you can. You know, so we want to make sure that we're following the, the law of what a traffic light is supposed to be. 
So now, what does Crawford Software Standard PO approval process look like and do? Well, we have a matrix or a approval process flow. Um, and names are multiple different possibilities there, what you want to call that. Uh, we started it with matrix because it, you're building a, a matrix of what and where the levels are at. So you build this matrix of approval limits. The buyers are set up with the matrix that they are to be associated with. And then the process goes through, the buyer creates the purchase order. And then if the order is above that buyer's preset limit, the order goes into that pending status, again, that yellow light. And then the approval process takes place based on that order value and the matrix that was set up for that buyer. So let's walk through that a little bit. So how that works on the, the PO approval matrix. And as we go through this, this is that PowerPoint presentation portion. As we go through it, when I show you the actual demonstration, I think this is gonna really help solidify what we're talking about right now. So a buyer creates the purchase order up to what we call the beginning limit of that first level approver. If that PO total goes above that, it goes into that pending status waiting for approval. Again, that yellow light comes on. And then the, the first approver reviews, and let's say he does approve it, the PO total value is over the beginning limit of the next level. He gets told that it, he's approved it. It must go to the next level person because it's above your limit and who that person is. And it continues through all the levels that you have. Um, as you'll see, you have the ability to be able to create many levels within that. So we give you the flexibility with our standard multi-level PO approval to have multiple levels associated there. So that continues until we've come to the end or the next approver, their beginning limit is lower than the PO total value. So just as an example, here's the, the beginning screen of this. Um, and again, we'll show this as we go through the demonstration as well that here we have the PO approval matrix. We have the key of the matrix ID, approval ID, whichever way you want to, to, to classify that, and then a brief description uh, of what that is. And then we come to the detail of the users or what we call the children that are associated here. And then the first person is level one. And in this case of this example that I show right here, the user ID, which is this, must be a user that exists on the Epicor system. And then it puts in their name, fills in their name for you. And this is their beginning limit. So the PO value is their beginning limit uh, for this user. We have also added functionality within the system that enhances it even further by giving you an alternate user. That alternate user is someone that will get the PO approvals because maybe Howard's out for an extended period of time. Maybe he took a vacation or he won the lottery and you know we don't sure if he's gonna come back or not, but we'll leave him there for right now. And you can put an alternate user on there and that alternate user then gets all of the POs that were going to go to Howard in his or her PO approval screen. So we look at the list view and as standard Epicor, we've expanded upon that as well in that we have the grid view as well that shows you the levels of which you may do ads at that point as well. And you show who the user is, what their beginning limit is, and if there's the alternate user is in effect. Uh, if the alternate user is not in effect, of course, there's no checkbox there. 
Um, and in the case that you see on the screen right now, that first user um, had an alternate user. It's not on right now, um, but that user ID does stay there for that at this point. Um, it can be turned on and off, and it could be assigned to somebody else as well. So let's talk about what happens. So we have our matrix here on the left-hand side that shows the elements that we uh, have for that setup. And so this buyer, whoever the buyer was, they're considered level zero. Their beginning limit, of course, is gonna be zero dollars because they're the buyer and they're starting. Their upper limit is one dollar, and I didn't put in the pennies, but it's one cent less than what the beginning limit of the next level is. So our first level person in this case, H. Low, his begin limit is 5,000, so the upper limit for the buyer themselves would be $4,999.99. Okay. Um, if we go down and look at the manager, his beginning limit is 500,000. So the person below him, in this case, Epicor, his upper limit would be $499,999.99. So we have that. And then his beginning was 250, so he goes from 250,000 to, for rounding purposes, 500,000 at that value. So if I have a purchase order and I'm going to take the second one in here that I have a PO value that's $10,000, how many approvers are needed? Well, there's one. Beginning limit for H low is 5,000. Well, the buyer can go up to $5,000. So we know that it's above his limit. So when he does the check mark to try to do the approval, it goes to the pending status and tells him it's above his limit of 5,000 and must be approved by H. Low. H. Low goes and pulls it into his PO approval. He looks at it, things look good. He does the approval. That at that point, it then approves the PO. You go back and look at the purchase order itself, and that purchase order now changes from pending to approved. Now, if we have someone looking at the purchase order and they don't like it, they can reject it. And if we take that Next level one, let's uh, we had that purchase order for $275,000. All right. They came to the first level person of that H low. He rejects it. It goes back to the buyer and it shows rejected on the purchase order entry. The buyer goes and gets in contact with the supplier, makes changes resubmits it it still comes in at 275,000 Howard now he got the message again he tried to approve it Howard got the message that he got the message that Howard needed to approve it Howard looked at it and this time he approves it so it goes back to the beginning process every time so it doesn't skip a level of approver at any point, it always is a sequential element. So what this looks like within the Epicor's system is we have modified the buyer's maintenance program to enhance that to have this matrix ID. And this is the matrix ID that will set up the flow of the approvals that are needed at the different levels. So in this case, our matrix ID is in, on the example that we show on the screen right now is that flow two, which is the one that we had back with the four different levels that we have. And so the buyer is zero to 5,000, then the Howard Low, then the Epicor, then the manager, and then the Epicor Financial.
And we're going to go through that as we go through the demonstration here. So he goes and creates a purchase order. And it says that he's exceeded his purchasing limit. And when I did this one initially on the screens, he only had $1,000. And it tells you that it's got to go to Howard Lowe. So, and you'll notice that it's now in the pending status. Howard Lowe goes to his PO approvals. There it sits. And now he does the action of approving or rejecting. Say he approves it. Again, I come back to the statements earlier that we want to use the date user stamp so that we know when that was done. And we have enhanced it further by using the submit button instead of having to go up and use the save button for the process there. And he submits it, it's approved, and in this case, it was below his limits, so now the PO is approved. So Crawford's software's approval process is basically the first level approver needs to review it, approve or reject it, if it's approved, it then checks the limit. If it goes up below the beginning limit of the next level, it goes ahead and approves it. If not, it puts it still as a pending status and goes to that next level. It repeats this process until either all levels have been approved and it's to the last level that you have, or it's approved by a level that the next beginning level is below the PO total value. All right, so with that, I'm going to now just take us into the system and show a demonstration of what and how this is used within the system itself. So bear with me while I close that. And yes, I do have Epicor already open. Um, I figured I didn't need to show you guys how to up open Epicor because it's a uh, something that you uh, do on a daily basis today. So, and I'm at the home screen of our current Epicor, our current 10.1 that we have. I don't have this loaded yet on our 10.2 environment, but we also have it running um, across the board. So I'm gonna go to my menu and show you just one of the things that uh, we have. I, I do have it on my favorites, but I do wanna show you that we have it under our executive analysis, our standard solutions, Crawford standard solutions. These are all the types of standard solutions that we provide today. Um, and, and what we're talking about today is what we call PO approval matrix. Uh, one of the other ones that we really like is our negative inventory. To be able to have drive negative inventory by a part. And so that's one of the uh, things that we also have enhanced within the system. Yeah, it's, it's important to point out that these standard solutions uh, go through the full software life cycle for us, right? We design them, we write them, we test them, we roll them out. If anybody's interested in learning more about these, you certainly have my contact information, but uh, this goes through the entire software development life cycle. Yes, and it does, and, and we make sure that we do a lot of testing with it. We also have betas that go with us as well. So I'm gonna take us back to our home and I'm gonna go into my PO approval matrix uh, right here. And yes, I already do have one open. I've started this one for us um, as we have uh, with regular Epicor, uh, we follow the same standard uh, coding practices and all when we do our development. And that is we, we have our standards new and things like that. And we have multiple tabs associated here. And I created this one to start the matrix itself. And I called it approval one. And its, its description is approval method one. Um, you can make those whatever you would like. They are totally user defined as you create new ones. And those are the keys that drive the things. I'm gonna go to my users tab. Uh, I have started to put in one user at this point. Uh, this user is level one because it's always going to be the first level when we go and recreate the matrix. I did put Howard Lowe in here and his PO value, beginning value is five, his beginning value is $5,000. 
Now you'll see I have three others within here, but we're going to go into create those at this point. And I'm going to go and have a new child. Oops. I created it with all of them. And whoop, I did that myself. How about that? We notice that we do have all the securities and all the things that are associated there as well. I go back in here. I'm going to go and show you that I do have just like within the standard Epicor. Um, I am looking for my Epicor system admin person. He's right here. He's got a value of twenty five thousand dollars at this point. If I go to my third one and I've got manager written there and he is my uh, system manager. Just one of the things that I created to, to make it a little bit easier to show here. And I made his value at $500,000. And you'll notice that the alternate user has not been checked yet. Um, so therefore that does that alternate user ID does not populate or does not even display on the detail screens until we do that. And then my last level was my Epicor financial person. Um, you know how those financial people are at times, they can uh, be really want to be controlling and make sure that they're looking at absolutely everything. So he has that uh, $1 million line. Anything above that's going to require his approval before it goes anywhere. So we come back down here and we have all of our users and, and their setups and the levels that they are associated to. And one of the things that I will show you is, is just like with standard Epicor, but we've enhanced, we come down into here and we go to our tool, tools personalization and I come in here in my collection and I know that this guy was my number and I will just tell it that it's the beginning level, beginning limit. And when I do that, it comes right into my screen. Yeah, if I learn to type, right? I never, I, I never took and marked it as unhidden. All I did was change the name. And you'll notice it's just like everything else. We have here, we come out of it. We now have added it to our grid view. And when I come back in and I'll go back and pull up this approval matrix that, and you'll notice I'm using the standard search functionality that we have. And I go to the users and I go to the list. Now you see those beginning limits right on that grid view. So we'll be using this one as we go through this. And that's approval one. And I'm going to do my standard copy things that I like to do as I go through. And I'm going to go into the buyer. And it stands buyer maintenance. And I'm going to pull in Brian Howard. Well, you'll see that currently flow two is the matrix that he was on. We have the stand the drop down that we have for being able to do a selection. And I'm going to use approval method one. And I'm going to save that. So this user, Brian Howard, now has this matrix of approval method one, which we showed had Howard Lowe at his beginning limit of 5,000, the Epicor system manager um, at 25,000, the manager at 500,000, the system manager, and then the Epicor financial person at $1 million. So I'm gonna go and create a purchase order and we've enhanced the, the purchase order process so that it looks at this matrix now uh, and, and drives through the process. So my buyer, I do because I am not on as Brian Howard right now. I'm on as uh, another user, the Epicor user itself. Um, I put in the buyer because I'm an authorized user of that buyer. So my, my supplier, and I'm going to use my one of my favorite suppliers that I like to use for uh, my testing and things as I go through is, is Potter. And then I'm going to go over to the headers because I want to make sure that I always put in my due date of when I need to have that. 
and the supplier has told me that he could have it to me by the 27th as well. And he's going to do uh, FOB of XWorks for this. And you'll notice my buyer is still here. Um, and I'm going to go over the lines and I'm just going to create a new line. My part, one of my parts that I'm going to use is this. It doesn't have a unit price. It's a standard cost of part. Um, I've never rolled my costs, so I have to put it in each time that I do a purchase order associated to this. I'll put it in for $100, and it's $235 a piece. So I'm at $23,500. So with that, um, this is where I'd really like to have interaction points, but I'm going to just say how many levels do we have? Well, the buyer we know is not going to get his, but level one is going to be required because his beginning limit's 5,000. The second level was 25,000, and 23,500 is below that. So I'll save that. I'm going to come back to my summary. I'm going to click the approve. I've exceeded my purchasing limit of 5,000. It's require approval from Howard Lowe. So my purchase order is 4,381. And, and while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a second one. And I'll also use, uh, let's go find AB Electronics, I think, would be a good company to use for this since they're at the very top of the list. Again, I've got to make sure I use the right buyer. Um, and this one I need a little bit sooner. I need it by this Friday. Well, AB Electronics isn't as kind and they want to charge me a miscellaneous charge for an expedite fee. And they want to charge me $250 to get it to me before Friday. And no, I do not get charged taxes because we're in New Hampshire. I'm going to go to my lines and start a new line. And I'll use another one of my purchase parts. And this one, I'm going to use 200 of those, and I'm going to buy them at $37 a piece. That's 7,400. Yes, that requires one level. I'm going to create a second line, and I'm going to use a different part. And I'm going to order 1,000 of these at $100 a piece, and that makes it 100,000. And you know what? Let's make it more interesting. Let's go ahead and order our Crawford one one as well. And AB Electronics, we're going to order 500 from them at $230 a piece. So we're at 115 actually. You know what? Let's make those $1,000 a piece. We're at 500,000. We still don't have enough because I want to make this purchase order make sure that we really have some, some good numbers. So there we go. We have a million dollars on one line. Okay. I come back here, and I'm going to go and, and approve this. Well, same thing. I've exceeded my purchasing limit. It goes to that first level person, and I say okay. So I've got this purchase order for $1.5 million dollars, and my other purchase order was for $37,000. So now I need to log on as Howard Lowe because he's the approver. I'm going to go ahead and do a change user. And I'll click OK to log on. And just so you understand, so you do realize that, yes, I did change. Uh, all the color schemes changed. Um, and I go to my PO approval. Since I've been on as Howard before, I have PO approval in one of my recent forms. I'm going to go and look. And additional security that we have put into the system is you log on as the user, and that user security, you have to do your retrieve, and it's only going to retrieve those that you are set to approve on. So here's my Howard, and Howard is a little bit late on a few things, but we're looking at this 4381, which was for $23,500.
And I look at that and I'm like, well, okay, what was that for? Uh, I can always come up here and right click and open with my PO tracker. And that's a standard PO tracker within the system. And I look and I pull it up and oh, I see it's 23.5. My lines, oh, they're $235 a piece. Well, that's a better price than what we've been seeing lately. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve that at this point. And all I do is I come up here and I approve it. And like I said, we recommend that you always use this date user stamp. This date user stamp then you'll see puts my ID in here, also puts the date and the time that this was completed. And I submit. This purchase order is now out of my queue all of a sudden. You notice it's gone from my list. And that and now I have this 4382. Well, it's 1.5 million dollars. That one I probably want to look at more, but for the sake of what we're talking about right now, as Howard, my buyer came and talked to me already and I knew this was coming. So I say, I know that was happening. We already talked about it. I'm gonna go ahead and approve it. And I'm gonna put a date timestamp, but I'm also gonna put after discussions with the buyer, understand why this is so high okay and i'm going to submit it this is approved to the next one and you'll notice that i've exceeded my purchasing limit of twenty five thousand dollars this is going to require approval from the epicor system admin which is the next user in that line that we have i'm going to say okay and you'll notice it comes out of my queue so at this point, if I go back and look at the purchase orders and I can go back to the purchase order tracker and look at each of the purchase orders, uh, we'll do that when we go back as the Epicor system admin here. I'm going to switch back to that user again because that's who it told me was the next level approver. I come back in, I'm back to my blue ones again. And if I look at my purchase order approvals, when I look here, I go to my PO approvals. And again, that security is there. I do the retrieve and I have two purchase orders, 4361, which is a, lot, a little while ago. And all of a sudden I have this H low one and you'll see that the comments come right along with it. So as each level approves or rejects, it's going to, those comments are going to stay with it and come along for the ride as it goes through the process. So, because we know we're going to go through multiple more levels because we're at 1.5 million, uh, we know it's going to go to the end. I'm going to say approve this and I'm going to mark it as this Epicor user. And I'm not going to put any additional comments on it at this time. I'm going to say submit. And now what this one is doing is it's checking my approval level as well. Uh, I've exceeded my purchasing limit of 500,000 and it's gonna require approval from the system manager. Okay, so now we're coming to the system manager's requirement. So I close that, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now I am looking for my purchase order uh, tracker and I have one right here and show you that what if i would learn to click today you know it's one of those things once in a while first order was 4381 that howard approved that purchase order now you see says approved and now this may be printed okay if i go to 4382 it still shows in a pending status so that purchase order is still not approved and I still cannot print that purchase order. So I'm going to go ahead and go over as manager at this point. And because that's the next level. And now my manager, you notice he's got different colors as well, so that you do know that I have changed users. And I look at his PO approvals. 
And on his PO approvals, I'll have all the elements that are coming from multiple different buyers. It doesn't have to just be one buyer that it comes from. Uh, and I do the retrieve again. And I, you'll see that I have one that is way out there. It's been a long time since uh, he was approved. Um, 4382 is the one that we were just looking at. And now it says that it was done here. He approved this. Well, I don't think this is any good. I'm going to mark this. And as the manager, I'm saying no, 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 no. Uh, I think... Uh, PO line two needs review to get pricing correct. And I submit that. Okay. So now this has been rejected. So now for the sake of, of our time, I'm going to go back in as purchase order entry. And in my purchase order entry, I'm going to pull up that 4382 to show you the, what that happens like. You'll notice now it is rejected. It's that red stop light. Don't go any further. Okay. I uncheck that. And now I can go to the lines and I can do the changes that I need to do. And he said that this was not a good price. So I got it. I got them down to $900, $900 a piece when I went back to him. So now I come back, I made that change, I go and click the approve and guess what? It's exceeded the limit. I say okay, and you'll notice it goes back to the pending status. I then go through the same process. It comes back into Howard's. I go just, I'll jump over to Howard's real briefly to show you that it comes back into Howard's approval. Oops. So, okay, it comes back into Howard's approval, and I retrieve, and you'll see 4382, and you also see all the comments that had come along before. So, we, even when it was rejected, all right, it came down through. PO line two needs review to get pricing correct. That was done. Now that everybody can go through the process and review that and, and do the the approval process after they're approved of course you can print the purchase order and go through the process that's how the po approval process now you'll notice yeah i exceeded my limit so now it's moved on to the next person and it goes through that all the way through to the highest level that is how our purchase order our crawford software standard multi-level purchase order approval process works. And this is an enhancement to how Epicor has started with the product. And we have seen and heard value associated to this as we've done this for people. And it's a great product to be able to have multiple levels of approvals and be able to give you that ability to look back and forth uh, and give that security and comfort feeling for multiple managers within an organization. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Burns. Thank you very much for all of your time this morning and this afternoon, and have a great rest of the day. Great. Thanks, Warren. We certainly appreciate the, um, the, the time taking to, to show us the uh, standard solution. You know, having worked with customers um, through the sales process with this standard solution, what I found is it's a peace of mind, right? When 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 a financial error happens or in, in a financial department, it's a it's a very stressful day at the office. And this really takes that up, up, that out of the equation and provides that peace of mind to the customers. So we've had very very happy customers. And we certainly encourage you to to, uh, to contact us, look a little further into these and all of our standard solutions as we move forward. So um, we just had a couple of quick questions. We're getting a little tight on time, but the first question, Orrin, how many levels can, can they have? Uh, we currently have it set up that it can go through double digits. Okay. Um, so we're, we're pretty flexible yep. when it comes to that. Uh, you define the levels then and how the value points are within those. Okay. And we 
sounds like we do have somebody interested. They want I have the question is can they buy this through from Epicord directly? Uh, at this time right now it is bought directly through Crawford Software. Okay. Um, it's a standard solution that Crawford Software has developed, and we have maintenance capabilities along with that. So it gives you that functionality and gives you the enhancements as you go up in releases as well. Great. And you, folks, you see my contact information. Anybody that wants a little further information on pricing and, and the sales side, I think is happy to help. Um, last question, Orrin. Is this difficult to install? Is, is it a – will it work on on-prem as well as – SaaS environment. We can make this work on either environment, and installation is a very simple installation setup uh, all the way through. Great. Well, that's the questions that we had for today. Thanks again, Oren. Um, I just want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. Look, a nice crowd today. Hope you enjoyed today's webinar with Oren. Th hope, hope you saw some value um, in the, in the multi-level uh, purchase order approval standard solution that we offer. Uh, please visit our website at www.crawford-software.com for more information on upcoming webinars. We, we now have a whole list of, of webinars that are upcoming uh, about once a month. The next webinar will be the second webinar in our series of, of I'm sorry, Crawford Software Standard Solutions. Part Lifecycle Management, new, new Epicor functionality from Crawford Software. It'll be on Wednesday, May 9th. 2018 uh, from noon to one o'clock and it's easy you can register right from our website or you can look from an email invitation that'll come from us shortly so uh, no other questions so Oren thank you again I want to thank everybody for taking the time to sit with us today and hope you have uh, a great rest of your day thank you thank you guys